Good day everyone! Welcome to join in to our Grace Unlimited Online. We'd like to encourage you to share this video out to your friends and family, especially those your heart have prompting. You can just click the share button of this video, copy the URL, pass it and send to them or share in your social platform. I believe this is a great opportunity at this time to share grace gospel to our friends and family. I trust that today's sermon will bless you. Remember to prepare your elements for Holy Communion, the bread and the juice. For we will be partaking of the Holy Communion together during the service and make sure it's within your reach. You may prepare your tithe and giving to the Lord as an act of worship if you have made Grace Unlimited as your home church. We can receive both digitally or via check and the detail for your giving are provided in the description box down below. Have you followed our social media platform? We like to connect with you. So like our Facebook page, follow our Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel and save our WhatsApp contact number. Let us stay connected and get the latest update from us. I hope that you are blessed by them. That's all from me. Let's move on to praise and worship our Jesus. Good morning, church. Let's worship. Lift the Lord together. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one right me Turn to you and you will always stand In trouble time is you I see I put you first, that's all right me Humble Lord I am all to you Yesterday, today, the same Forever till forever Means no way Let's go
worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in on me. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship. Worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Like in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touches every heart. I worship you. I worship. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning life around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, many every heart, I worship We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, like in the darkness, my God, there is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, like in the darkness, my God, there is who you are. There is who you are. Now it's the time to partake our Holy Communion. Jesus died for us on the cross as a sacrifice to redeem us from the curse of sin. And so we honor the body and the blood of Jesus Christ to remind us of our position of righteousness. Isaiah 53 verse 5 But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He has been wounded, crushed, in exchange for our wholeness. His resurrected life is now in us and death has no standing upon us. We have divine health, supernatural youth, and as our days, so shall our strength be. Matthew 26, 26 And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciple and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Let's partake the bread. Matthew 26, 27 Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many in the remission of sins. And now let us lift up our cup, proclaiming the forgiveness of sin through the blood that Jesus shed for us, so that now we have the righteous standing in the presence of God, and we are now called children of God. Now let us have a moment of worship through our tithes and offering. The Lord has given us blessings upon blessings in every area of our life. We proclaim His death through the Holy Communion. Now we proclaim that He is alive among us through tithing and offering. 
if you see Grace Unlimited as your home church, you may give via digitally or check. For more details, you may go to the website here. May God multiply the seed that you sow abundantly and be blessed. Hey, Grace Unlimited. Uh, welcome online. Thank you for joining us again this morning. You know, we've been here since uh, March, right? Doing our online service when we had to like physically close in uh, in March, right? Most of us thought that it would be just for a few weeks and everything would be back to normal. But not right now, we are almost entering August, right? And uh, we're still doing our online service because uh, it's not the right time for us to meet physically. But I, I really believe uh, that all things work for good for those who love God and I call according to His purpose, Romans 8, 28. And, um, and in, in a sense, you are you and I, we are really blessed, right? On Sunday, that uh, right after our online service, most of us, most of you, uh, will be joining the New Creation Church Sunday service. And you'll be feeding from the teachings of Pastor Joseph Prince, right? And, uh, and so Sunday, you have a double portions. Uh, even for me, right? I really enjoy uh, like attending New Creation Church every Sunday or so, feeding on the Word of God. Uh, I even joined their youth service right at 5.30 p.m. So Sunday is a good time of feeding for me too. All right, so this morning I pray that you'll be blessed as we, as I share the Word with you this, uh, and open up the Word with you. Right? I pray that um, it will also minister to you, that you will receive a fresh Word from the Lord this morning. I felt led to teach on the area of uh, protection today, all right? Um, I was just meditating on this, about the children of Israel in Egypt, when Egypt was going through the plagues and the pestilences, when they had the uh, river of blood, deep, deep darkness, um, when they were attacked by the frogs, all right? When all, uh, when they're going through all these pestilences, but uh, these things did not come near uh, the children of Israel in Goshen, where they, where they live. But they, these things did not come near their dwelling. Likewise, right, with all the new cases, new clusters of COVID-19 that is found in Kuching and in Sarawak, I, I believe, right, that you and I, we can uh, believe God for protection, claim His protection. And so this morning, I would like to show you from the Word of God, uh, what is the basis and of, of this claim, right? How, God, how you can live in His protection right? despite the situation, despite the circumstances. I, I really believe, right? I declare that you and your family will be safe uh, through these difficult times. One of my key verses for today is from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs to it and is safe and set on high, far above evil. Um, if you meditate upon this verse, there's so much um, nuggets of truth you can chew upon it, right? Firstly, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, right? Strong tower, think of like a fortress, right? So when the enemy attacks, right, and you are in a fortress, the arrows cannot come near you, the fiery darts cannot come near you, right? So it says here, uh, also, it's the righteous, right? The righteous runs to it. Uh, and so you need to know who you are, right? To claim this. So you, as we always, as we have always taught you, right? That you and I, we are no longer sinners. But once upon a time, we were sinners. But now we are saved by grace. When Jesus put His righteousness on us, we are the righteousness of God. And so it says here, the righteous, right? That means you. You, uh, we run to it, right? We run to the fortress of God. And it's safe. And I like this version. This is the amplified version. It says, we are not only safe, but God has set us on high, far above evil, all right? So so what, what is a strong tower here in this verse? And we find that it's the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So I entitled my message this morning, right? Find protection in the name above every name. When you study the Bible, you, you will discover that God has many names uh, or many variants of his name. Um, I think one commentary says that there are 72 variants 
name of God that you can find in the Bible, right? But um, and it's because God is so amazing. Uh, all these names describe and expect a characteristic of who He is, right? Um, just like some people call me differently, right? Uh, a few of you call me Alex. Some people call me Pastor Alex. Um, you know, quite a lot of you like to just call me Pastor, right? Um, and one of the Sunday school children used to call me Pasta, right? Uh, and so there's a variance on my name, uh, but they all, uh, if you call, I will respond to, to whatever you call me, right? Because um, it's me, all right? And uh, so God has all these names in the Bible that is uh, about Him, right? For example, when you say Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is your banner, and you find names like you know, he is the first and the last of the Alpha and the Omega, right? Jehovah Sid Kanu, the Lord, your righteousness. And so the word heals here for Lord in uh, Proverbs 18 is, uh, is the word Yahweh, right? Which is the most common name of God in the Bible. And it's re it really describes who he is, right? Yahweh, or, or some people translate it as Jehovah. Uh, I think Yahweh is a more correct translation. Uh, is the first mention was when God revealed Himself in the burning bush to Moses. Uh, he says, I am who I am, right? And you can also translate it to, I will be who I will be, or I was who I was, right? Because God is past, present, and future, right? So uh, it says here, the righteous runs to Yahweh, and they are safe, all right? So that, that name uh, is a name of protection in Proverbs chapter 18. A verse that speaks about God's protection is also found in uh, John 17 verse 12. And Jesus praying to the Father uh, said this, right? He says, While I was with them, I kept them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me. I protected them and, they, and not one of them was lost, except the man who was bound to be lost, that Judas is carried. So that the scripture might come true, all right? So, you know, this, this is Jesus before the cross. Uh, this is Jesus before he died. And uh, even then, he could keep all his disciples safe. Right now, how much more you and I, right? That lives after the cross, after the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, when the work is already done, when the work is finished, right? I really believe, right, that the protection is your divine right, right? That you and your household, you and your family, uh, should live in the protection of the Lord uh, for the rest of your life here on earth. Amen? When we say salvation or to be safe in the Bible, it means more than to be safe from hell, all right? We know that New Testament salvation is more than that. And God wants to save us spirit, soul, and body in every area of our life. Is, um, you know, because of the fall of Adam, we've fallen short. Sin means we missed the mark. We have fallen short in almost every area in our life, right? And so if you have sickness in your body, so Jesus days to heal you, to sozo you, right? And it's the same word, right? To heal you and to save you is, is the same word, it's the word sozo, all right? So if you need healing in your head, right? You have difficulties, if you, you lack peace of mind, Jesus is there to save you, right? If you need saving in, the, in your relationship, in your family situation, He's there to help you, right? Saving your business, He is there. He is your Savior, right? His name as, uh, is written in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, when God revealed His Son, right? Uh, his name should be called Jesus because He will save His people from their sin, all right? So the word Jesus is, it means Yahweh saves, right? Uh, it's a variant of Yahweh, right? And um, this name, I believe is the all and compassing name of God, all right? And it's a name that's above all names later on, we'll see that. And uh, so if you are in trouble, if there are anything that in your life that needs saving, right, call this name, right? This name, Jesus, is the name that will save you, that will protect you, heal you, deliver you, all right? The name, Jesus. When we say Jesus, right, we mean the Jesus in the Bible, right? Christ Jesus, the resurrected Christ, right? Because uh, even today, there are many versions of Jesus walking upon the earth, right? For example, there's a footballer, right? Manchester City footballer named Jesus, right? So that's not the Jesus we worship. And so whenever we say Jesus, um, 
it means the Jesus in the Bible, right? The Jesus who died for our sins, who was killed, buried, resurrected, and resurrected, right? So that's the that's the Jesus that we worship. That's the Jesus whose name is all powerful, right? So why why is this name so powerful, right? Uh, you find that the reason in Philippians chapter two verse eight, right, and, and verse nine it says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, right? And uh, we know this, right? Uh, we shared about this, uh, this last Sunday, how it's because of Jesus' of obedience that we are saved. It's because of Adam's disobedience that we are lost. But it was Jesus' obedience that he uh, obeyed the Father fully. Even though it was difficult for him, he went to the cross for us, right? Because he knew no sin and there's no sin in him. Uh, but he was made sin for us on the cross so that his righteousness might be ours, right? So verse, verse 9 says, Therefore, God has highly, highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name, right? So anything that has a name must bow to this name, right? Right? And uh, we believe that we declare it, right? So look at your life, right? Right? It's a uh, is money problem, a name, all right? So that name must bow to Jesus, right? Is sickness a name? Is cancer a name? All right? So cancer must bow to the name of Jesus. As I was just reading this, I also believe, right, that this name is above all the other names of God, right? For example, uh, Jehovah Rapha, or Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord who heals, right? So you don't have to use Jehovah Rapha anymore. Just use Jesus, right? Just call upon Jesus and that name will heal you, amen? That, that verse 10 says, right, look at this, right? Isn't this amazing? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of heaven ones, of heavenly ones, and of earthly ones, and of ones under the earth, right? So above the earth, on the earth, and under the earth must bow to this name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, right? So I declare to you, I speak to you, right? COVID-19 must bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Cancer must bow to the name of Jesus, right? Your high blood pressure, pressure must bow to the name of Jesus, right? The enemies that come against you in your workplace must bow to the name of Jesus, right? Your financial situation must bow to the name of Jesus. For verse 11 says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah, right? Every tongue should bow to the name of Jesus. Now, even in the natural, right, we know uh, there are some names that are really powerful, right? Uh, sometimes we invoke those names. Uh, you know, some people like to claim help from some VIPs or some, uh, you know, famous people. You know, using their names can get you out of trouble. Um, I remember when I was young and um, in primary school, when I was approached by some bullies, um, I was in primary one, right? And it was the first week of my school life. And I ran into troubles with some bullies, some primary six kids. A group of them approached me and I was about to be beaten up. And uh, suddenly has this wisdom to invoke the name of the principal and says, Oh, uh, Mr. Ong is my uncle, all right? And uh, actually it's not really my real uncle, but he was, a, uh, the, he was my father's best friend, right? And, so he was my school principal, right? So I just mentioned his name and, uh, and they slowly walked away from me, right? So I wasn't beaten up, right? So you can see how powerful names can be, all right? Even in the natural. Uh, likewise, right? Uh, when you call upon the name of the Lord, right? How much more, right? The name that is above every name, right? Uh, it can deliver you out of problems. I don't know how many times uh, I've heard testimonies of, you know, people being attacked or in trouble. Uh, they just call upon the name. When you're really in trouble, right? You don't have time to pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? Just cry out, right? Jesus, help me, right? Uh, and you find that uh, He will be there to, to help you and deliver you. I believe it, right? Because He is near you. He's not just near you, He's in you, all right? So, Use that name, right? So everyone, uh, be reminded of this, right? Ladies, if you are ever in trouble, 
call upon the name of Jesus, call upon His name. One of my, uh, as, as I remember, remember testimonies, remember stories in my life. I remember when I was uh, uh, still a teenager, I used to help out uh, with Campus Crusade for Christ um, on a regular basis. I volunteered my service for them. And they had a dog, right, uh, whose name was Tiger. And he was a fierce dog, um, but he was all chained up. And uh, we were, uh, most of us were really scared of him. And he was just bark and bark and uh, growl and looked very fierce, all right? So one day, I was, uh, as, I was, as I was cycling there, as I reached the gate, uh, which was our campus crusade, which, which was quite near my house, uh, then I saw Tiger Unchained, right? And uh, he rushed at me, growling. I knew, I knew he was going to beat me. Uh, but all I can remember was to cry out in the name of Jesus. It says, I just shouted, Jesus, at the door, right? And uh, immediately, uh, his countenance changed and he stopped barking and he walked away, right? That was the first time, I think, uh, that I saw the name of Jesus. Uh, that is really pow powerful, right? And the Bible says, he has given us authority over snakes and scorpions, right? And now, uh, and so that's, that's the name of Jesus. So whenever you're in trouble, whenever you have difficulties in your life, right? right when you call upon His name, you look at the verse letter, right? You are actually invoking His power. You are actually uh, believing in what He has done on the cross for you. Amen? So call upon the name of Jesus, right? Call upon Him and find protection in this name. The next thing that I want to show you is this. There's healing in the name of Jesus, right? We find this a good example, uh, Peter healing the lamb man at, uh, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6. And Peter said to him, right, I have no money, right? Silver and gold have I none, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, I order you to get up and walk. Hallelujah. So can you see Peter very specific of who this Jesus is? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? I order you to get up and walk. So Peter explaining what has just happened, right? Just now was uh, Acts 3 verse 6, but now we, we jump to verse 16, right? It says, It was the power of His name that gave strength to this lamb man. What you see and know was done by faith in His name. It was faith in Jesus that has made Him well, as you can all see. So can you see when you have faith in Jesus, the name of Jesus, when you call the name of Jesus, you are actually believing in what Jesus has done on the cross for you. Amen? And, and so, when you say Jesus, you are uh, believing in Him and in His work. Let's continue to look at uh, one more verse from the book of Acts. Uh, we jump a few more verses down, but now in chapter 4, uh, chapter 4 verse 10, Peter again explaining what has happened, says, Then you should know that, and then you should all know and all the people of Israel should know that this man stands here before you completely well through the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from death. And um, hallelujah. So this is the same name that we call to, right? So when we pray in Jesus' name, Amen, we are calling, um, we are believing in this name. All right. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, keep on uh, believing. I'm getting ahead of myself. But keep on calling upon this name, right? Don't be, you know, pai say about this name. Don't be kadukut about this name, right? Use it, right? It's your birthright. It's your inheritance in Christ. And um, hallelujah. As we can see uh, it, in the following verses, um, only you have a right to use this name. When you call upon the name of Jesus, you're not calling upon just any name. You're calling upon the most powerful name in this universe. Here in Acts chapter 16, Paul cast out a demon in the name of Jesus. Notice it's the same power that Jesus had. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he cast out demons. He even cast out a legion of demons and uh, commanded them to go into the pigs, remember? So, you know, you have authority over demons. So we are not afraid of demonic forces, right? Vampires and zombies and Pontianaks. We're not afraid of these things because they have no power over us. In fact, we have power over them. I remember one of my friends who shared his testimony how many years ago before he was a believer and uh, something attacked him in the night, some invisible force. And um, he remembered what his friends told him. When, you're, when you are faced with such a situation, call upon this name. 
And true enough, when he called upon the, the name of Jesus, the thing left. And uh, soon, later, soon, after, soon after that, he became a believer in Christ. When we call upon the name of Jesus, it's not a magical word like abracadabra or something out of Harry Potter. It's, something, it's actually something very real. It's actually our birthright, our inheritance in Christ, that we are allowed to use this name that God has given us the authority to use this name. I like this verse from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. It says, For this cause I bow my knee to the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's why we are called Christians. And so Christians who have a relationship with Jesus has a right to use his name. He gives us the authority. He gives us the right to use his name. So let's use his name over our situation, right? Let's speak to our circumstances. Let's speak to our problems. Let's speak to the demonic forces. Let's speak to the sickness and disease. Let's speak over those things. Let them bow to the name of Christ Jesus. Jesus said in uh, John 14 verse 13, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful, right? Take these two verses, just meditate upon it, just chill upon it. Hallelujah. And the other verse which I like to link to is from uh, Romans 10, verse 13 and verse 14. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, right, to call upon the name of Jesus. Amen. So many times we are quiet about our situation or try to solve the things on with our own strength, with our own intellect and wisdom. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Praise the Lord, right? As we close, uh, let me read to you from one encouraging verse from Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. It says, And everything, whatever you do, in word and deed, do it. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Hallelujah. So we glorify God so by making Jesus speak, right? By uh, acknowledge, acknowledging Jesus, right? Whatever things that you do, right? Whatever things, right? So it's everything in our life. So spend time, right? Not just uh, uh, using the name of Jesus, but to confess the word of Jesus, to spend time listening, meditating on the word of Jesus. Spend time praising Him, right? Making Jesus speak. When you praise Him, you are saying, Lord Jesus, you are bigger than my situation. You are bigger than my problem. No matter how big your situation, it's not as big as the name of Jesus. That name, the Bible says, is above every name. And every name must confess. And every knee must bow to that name. Hallelujah. And uh, that's, what, that's what you have, right? The greatest person in this universe is with you and for you. The greatest name that you, you can uh, confess is the name of Jesus. So you're really, really blessed. Amen. So at the beginning of, the ser of this service, uh, during our worship time, uh, we had Tide leading us with the song Waymaker. So in closing, uh, here's another version of the song. And uh, this is Lee Woon with a musical instrument called a kalimba, right? That, so this is her playing Waymaker. Be blessed by this. And uh, let Jesus be lifted up even through the music.
this week. Let Jesus bless you and keep you, protect you. Let Jesus make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. This week, let Jesus lift up his countenance and pour forth his peace, his shalom upon you. Right? Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If Jesus is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. So stay blessed, grace unlimited, stay protected. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Dear brother and sister, thank you for staying with us. I pray that you are blessed through the messages. Let us grow strong in the soil of grace and put our trust in Jesus. He is the one who made you righteous and He loves to bless you. Friend, if you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord Savior, I'd like to invite you to make this prayer together with me. It is so simple. All you need is to pray this prayer together with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me and dying for me at the cross. You cleanse me and pronounce me completely clean through the shedding of your precious blood through the cross. I now receive you as my Savior and Lord. All things have passed away and all things in me have become new. Thank you, Father, that you see me righteous in Christ and you are my holiness. You engraft my name in your palm and in your heart for you love me. Now, teach me to see myself through the lens of Christ. Father, I give thanks to you. Amen. Congratulations. You are now in Christ and we welcome you to join our big family. For new believers who stayed in Kuching, we have a gift to you. You can write to us through our WhatsApp contact and type new friend and we will connect with you. If you have a testimony, do share with us. You can write in to us through our WhatsApp contact number. Your testimony will always encourage who are in your situations. Also, do you need a prayer? If yes, you can let us know too by WhatsApp us. Alright, shall we meet next week? Bye-bye!